What's up guys, this is Heiss, and I'm here in stall three at the Colorado Railroad Museum today. This is our machine shop, and I wanted to talk about a little machining project that I had recently. I won't bore you with an hour of footage, but I do want to talk about the results and, and why we had to do what we had to do, because it's just another one of those things that makes you go, yeah, we know why we got rid of these things. So this is a part of RGS-20. Extra points to anyone who can tell me what it is. If you said it was a valve seat, you'll get partial points. If you said it was the turret shutoff seat, well, you're an expert. This is what was on 20. It's made of bronze, and the threads are far from ideal. This nut holds this actual button to the valve stem, and so it's very important that this engages well, and you can hear the threads, and they're a little done, a little done. So it was time for a new part. This was discovered during the annual inspection. Once per year, we have an annual inspection on all of our locomotives, which is why you can see that the dome lid is on top of the roof and not on the dome. And uh, a number of bits have been taken apart because you always have to go through, take care of a number of different items for the FRA and for the state for our sake make sure everything's safe and all ready to go. And as you do, you check your valves, you see what's leaking, what needs to be lapped, and what needs to be tightened back up. And we noticed that the turret shutoff was leaking a little bit and it needed to be lapped, which started this whole process. If you don't know what lapping is, lapping is basically putting like liquid sandpaper in between a valve seat and the valve button. And so you sit here, you put some sandpaper right on this contoured edge, basically liquid sandpaper, it's lapping compound. And then you sit there and spin it in place until the two surfaces grind evenly into each other and become smooth. And you can check that with dyes and things to make sure it's done all right. But the reason why this makes me think of the whole steam versus diesel thing is because we discovered this part. The threads were done the angle on the seat is really worn, and, and it's a bronze part, which means that if we lap it into the valve itself, the valve being iron, this is gonna wear all the way, and the iron's not really gonna wear away. So it's time to machine some new parts. So what did that entail? Well, we had to take the bonnet out of the valve. This is actually what this threads through. You can see it, it's got those big matching Acme style square threads in there. And then we had to make a lapping tool. So this was my first time making internal threads on a lathe and they actually came out really nice, which I'm pretty happy about. But this is made out of steel. And so this is the same thing as this guy, although without some of the features that we didn't need for the tool. And this threads on to this valve stem. This is the actual shutoff. So when you're in the cab, you can spin this guy closed and it'll make sure that you don't have any steam going to all your appliances, which should you have another valve fail is really critically important because you need to be able to shut that down tight. This is the turret. You can see all these valves and everything's covered in rags because you need a lot of rags when you're lapping and also the fiberglass is itchy and you don't wanna touch it with your hands. So there you go. Inside there is the main shutoff seat. And so that bonnet we showed you earlier and this stem goes down in here just like that. And so that seat sits just like that. Then the bonnet would come up and finish and have packing to seal it off. And then there's a shutoff from the cab that's held up right now. So you can shut off the turret from above the cab, the 20, just in case something is broken in here and is leaking steam everywhere. You can shut it off externally. So that's why this is really important. But this is where all of the appliances the locomotive get their steam. Injector starting, injector starting, dynamo, hydrostatic lubricator, air compressor, which actually snakes all the way around back there, the blower, you know, a little bit of everything. A lot of really early steam engines didn't necessarily have a turret and they just had things plumbed directly into the, the body of the boiler itself. But most of the later engines ended up getting turrets or ended up getting modified to have turrets. And they're a really helpful thing and we definitely need it to shut off when we want it to. So that's what we've been working on. And so I had to go through and I had to make this tool and I'm not really the world's best machinist. I'm an apprentice and learning these things. So it took me a day to make this. 
It was a lot of work. And then I had to spend, you know, about half of a day lapping it into the actual body of the valve. And then because we corrected the geometry and we were able to correct the seat in the locomotive and we needed to fix the threads, I had to do it all over again in bronze. I had to make this guy out of bronze and I'm actually midway through lapping it. Uh, we're done for the day at the shop here, which is why I'm filming. But you can see that I've blue die checked it and I'm getting pretty close to a good seat all the way around, but I still have more lapping to go. And I've been working on this all day today after working on it a fair bit on Saturday as well. So we're going to be four or five days into this repair that was an extra repair on the annual inspection. And the reason this makes me think of the steam versus diesel thing is there is nothing where you do this on a diesel. Maybe on a really old diesel, okay, maybe you might have to lap something in, but almost everything is designed to be component level replaceable. There is no valve seat that is designed for multiple wear. You just replace the whole part. You wouldn't even replace this. You would take the turret off and put a new turret on, which perhaps the railroad did back in the day, but back in the day, the railroad had armies of people because you had to have armies of people to do these simple little lapping jobs and it saved you on the material budget, which was the big thing back in the day because people were cheap and we died like men. And as such, they designed everything for multiple uses and multiple wares. Crosshead guides designed to be cut multiple times, re-poured, re-machined. Everything was designed for multiple uses rather than kind of the planned obsolescence throwaway model. And that's the case on the diesel locomotive. On the steam locomotive, almost everything is custom. This pipe to the injector has to be custom because the bracket's custom. The injector is one piece part that you can buy, but it's designed to be remanufactured on the inside. All the seats can be lapped like we were just talking about. The only thing you find that's really standard is the brake equipment. You can change this feed valve for another one, swap this out, new gasket, same thing with the automatic brake valve, same thing with the independent brake valve, which is being covered by 20's binky, but that's almost it. Almost everything else has to be custom and custom fit. And you can't necessarily just take one part from one engine to another. Yeah, sometimes you can, but you usually have to make it refit because if you have a different sized wheel, if the wheels have been cut more, then the spacing between things is gonna be a little different. And you have to treat everything as such. The point of the matter and what I'm getting to is the maintenance time. And that's the big thing. Steam locomotives have a 31 day inspection, a 92 day inspection, and an annual inspection. And then you have the 1472, of course, which 346 is uh, presently undergoing here in Stall 3. That's the, the big overhaul, and diesels have big overhauls too, but these days, diesels have a 92 day, and if they have computer controlled air brakes, they have a 184 and a 368, or annual and semi-annual. So rather than once a month needing to cool the engine down and deal with it, you have diesel locomotives that are potentially running for six months before they need to see the shop, unless they break something, which happens. And when they get to the shop, they don't spend a whole lot of time there. It was regular at my shop, at BNSF, when I worked there, that I would have a crew of maybe six guys on a locomotive doing a maintenance, and they would have the required items for the maintenance done in one eight-hour shift. That's it. And yes, we're at a museum and we have many hats to wear and many things that we must take care of, but we've been going at 20's annual for the better part of a month now, dealing with all these little things that come up and inspections with the state and the FRA. And okay, if we were just guys that were just solely working on this, okay, it would take a couple days, but that doesn't change the amount of work that it was to do this. This one part, this one little defect that we came up with needed to be fixed adds how many days in, and that was on the annual, whereas, I mean, you, you go to a big diesel shop on the BNSF, you'll bring the engine in, do the maintenance, kick it out, it'll be back pulling freight in 12 to 16 hours versus a ton of time. The age old saying with steam is, a day on the road is a day in the shop. And we've certainly learned that here. So anyways, guys, I hope you liked this little look at some of the work I've been doing and steam and diesel and the little things that make them different. Because the maintenance on steam is a lot more intensive just because the design schema is totally different. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>